I was a very good businessman, ruthless, which was one reason why I got out. I was becoming the sort of person I didn't want to be. I was also a compulsive worker. I'm still compulsive, but I hope the ruthlessness has vanished. When I returned to teaching in the late 60s, I attracted radical students to my classes, but I seen myself to be a conservative. Now, I regard myself as a radical by comparison to most of my students. They've moved to the opposite end of the spectrum. In the 60s, the classroom was a place where students were constantly forcing the professor to defend his position, his attitude. Now, the tendency is almost the exact opposite. I wish more students would say, that is not the question to ask. I think that wrong statements in discussion can be very useful, that is, if the other students speak up against them. I wish students would not be as reluctant as they are to risk wrong statements because a wrong or mistaken assumption will provoke much more in the way of discussion than simply a flat statement of what is. Part of the change in students is reflected in the attitude toward Henry David Thoreau. In the 60s, Thoreau was more or less the god of the students, and Walton was their Bible. This fall, students were saying, who is this nut, and what are these things he's saying about going your own way and living in the woods? How does he expect us to live without money? Almost everything we read in 20th century literature tries to instruct us that we can no longer be romantics. I think my mind is not a profound mind. This is what I meant when I said I was not an intellectual. I tend to thurn things. This is one reason I like Thoreau. I see myself in Thoreau. Like him, I tend to turn things to the joke. I get nervous being taped. You freeze something, however alive and meaningful, or even silly, into a series of poses. I must admit that the cartoon Kevin Burns drew of me for the poster of The Country Wife was rather reassuring. It made me believe that at least one other person saw me in caricature the way I see myself in caricature. It is not really a Fred Wagner that is concealed from the world. It is just a Fred the world does not see. Whatever one does ultimately involves hurting someone somehow. I get a great deal of pleasure out of kneeling down as gracefully as I can because of my girth and mucking around in the earth. I really like the smell and feel of the damp, cold ground. The living room is a room I hate. I bought that massive furniture immediately after I left my wife, and I was still under her influence as to what a room should look like. But it isn't her taste, it's a sort of parody of her taste, and that is why the room is really uncomfortable. I like the blue antechamber with the black and white tiles. It gives me a very interesting feeling. It is a mysterious room. When I lecture, I know something is happening in the minds out there, but I don't know what, and discussion groups enable me to find out at least a part of what is going on in the minds, uh, the minds behind the faces I'm looking at. I dislike the first three weeks of a course. It's absolutely exhausting trying to get behind those faces to whatever is back there. And of course, you'll have some students in two or three courses and you never succeed in getting behind the face. You never find out what the mind is really like you get a certain competent essay and competent exam which reveal nothing of the individual. Some students are private people who want to be left alone and want to be private. I'm not condemning this, but as a curious person, I find it somewhat frustrating. I suppose I seem like the typical college teacher or what people think of as the typical college professor. I am more the stereotype than most of the other people around here. I don't have the demands upon me that an immediate family makes upon my colleagues. I have more free time to throw myself into the all-consuming activity of being a teacher. 
I'm quite happy by myself. This is not to say that I am antisocial, because I really do like people, but I don't find other people at all necessary to my existence all the time. I enjoy listening to other people. This is one of the reasons I can meet with six discussion groups and not find them tedious, because I truly derive pleasure from listening to what goes on. I'd much rather be a listener than a talker. In the transcendental sense, the romantic sense, the Emersonian sense, the imagination is the highest faculty that we possess because it enables us to perceive not only our own center, but God. Christ, I think, had this liberated imagination. Well, since I am one of the few surviving transcendentalists, one has to train oneself how to swim underwater, keep up moving underground, and only occasionally come up for air, become a functioning schizophrenic, live in the world, yet keep one part of you so that it's never touched. At heart, I think I'm a very despairing person. Yet even though I see life as one pratfall after another, I try to behave as if dignity were possible.